بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد I begin in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that his beloved Nabi and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his last and final messenger uh, it gives me great pleasure and honor to be here with all of you on this uh, blessed Saturday morning uh, during this very, very interesting time as we've been uh, reminded time and again, we pray, we begin by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, making uh, this difficult time uh, an easy one for all of us and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to let us get through uh, this difficult time with immense ease and blessings and let this time uh, be a, a memory for all of us, inshallah, uh, something that we can put behind us, inshallah, ameen ya rabbal alameen. Um, I also want to take a moment to uh, begin by thanking uh, all of you uh, for joining and for your continued support to uh, the North American Islamic Shelter for the Abused, NISA, uh, over the years, whether you are uh, a donor who've, who's been donating for a number of years or you're a new contributor, uh, we value and appreciate your um, uh, generous contributions and know that there are a number of individuals and families right here locally in our community in the Bay Area um, that are being assisted uh, with your funds and literally being given uh, a brand new life uh, through the course of the services that we provide, which would not be possible without uh, your contributions, your support and your prayers. So Jazakumullah khair for that. So I want to jump sort of right into uh, the topic today. Um, the topic at hand is uh, what our family needs from us uh, maintaining domestic harmony. Really, it's a very cliche title. Uh, it's not like um, you know anything new uh, needs to be said, really. But honestly, this uh, this event today is to serve as as a reminder, a stark reminder of. Um, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived, um, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treated uh, those around him, be they immediate family, extended family, uh, his friends, his community, and even his foes. Um, and also at the same time, just uh, reminding ourselves of what is essentially common sense. Um, you know, just, uh, just that, you know, Putting, putting our priorities straight, setting our priorities straight and asking ourselves uh, before we do anything. There's a hadith. In fact, the Sahih of Imam Bukhari begins with a hadith uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is heavily, heavily commented upon by uh, various different scholars. Uh, Imam Nawawi begins his Al-Arba'in Al-Nawawiyah, the 40 hadith collection of his with this hadith as well, as do many other uh, reputable collections of a hadith. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, is narrated to have said, Innam al a'malu bin niyat. Um, our actions are based on our intentions. In other words, it's the, the foundation of anything and everything that we do happens to be our intention. While there's a number of things that we do in life, some significant, others insignificant, some we do them just because we're supposed to do them, some we do them because we're required to do them, but the question is, and this is a question that every believer asks themselves, is that how can I make a difference? Uh, what benefit can I get out of this? And when we speak of benefit as believers, we don't simply think of benefit of this world. Rather, more importantly, we think of the benefit of the hereafter. In Surah Muzzammil in the 29th Juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a verse where he says, Whatever good you will send forth, you will find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Though we're also uh, reminded um, in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Whosoever male or female does good deeds and they're believers, we will give them a goodly life a pure, a purified life, a sanctified life, a tranquil life. 
In other words, there's consequences to everything that we do in our lives, right? Consequences to everything that we do in our lives, no matter how significant or insignificant we may think they are, which is why we are continuously reminded by our pious predecessors that whatever it is that we do, right? Think of the intention as to why you're doing what you're doing. Turn an insignificant act into an act of worship. Turn a required act that you may be required to do that you do not want to do into an act of worship. As a result of which, the benefits of that ibadah and the benefits of that worship would come and assist you and help you in this world and the hereafter. Right? Help you in this world and the hereafter. I'm reminded of a tradition, a hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, where he sallallahu alayhi wasallam is narrated to have said, خيارukum, خيارukum The best of you are those who are best to their families. The best of you are those who are best to their families. In other words, and this is, this is not foreign to anyone, um, our spouses, know us the best. We can put a persona when we step outside our door, we can be a different person at work, we can have a different personality within our friends, uh, we can have a different personality within our acquaintances, we can have a completely different personality when we are interacting with individuals at the masjid or wherever it is. Yet when you come home, you are who you are. While you can try to put a persona on at home that can only last so long, our children know who we are. Sadly, one of the reasons why many teenage and adult children um, don't have a lot of respect for their immediate, for their parents, for their biological parents, and some of their immediate family is as a result of knowing exactly who they are as individuals. Are you a compassionate individual? Are you a kind individual? Are you an empathetic individual? And everything that we do, everything, every action of ours has consequences, right? Every action of ours has consequences. Some consequences are that of this dunya, and then the more graver of those consequences are that of the hereafter, because we will be responsible for everything that we have done in this life in the hereafter, no matter who we've done it to, right? No matter who we've done it, done it to. Now, subhanAllah, um, you know, there's also a, a, a tradition of the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, um, it narrated, you know, the Prophet ﷺ says, Zur ghibban tazdad hubban, you know, visit in each other uh, infrequently. Don't hang around with each other too much. Why? Because it will increase your love, right? It'll increase uh, your love for one another, which is why when, um, you know, in some of our sort of normal lives, if we may, which I don't know how normal they were to begin with, but in some of our normal lives, we'd leave the house in the morning, come back in the evening, go away on a trip, come back from a trip. Uh, we'd go on vacations with our family, kind of get out of the, you know, day-to-day -day routine that we are in and be able to spend time with each other in a different setting, in a more relaxed and more calm setting and be able to come back home uh, recharge, rejuvenate, re kind of restart, rekindle that, you know, relationship. And I'm not just speaking specifically to spousal relationships, rather I'm talking about just uh, your entire familial relationships, right? With your family, be it your, uh, be it your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, your grandparents, whoever it is. Uh, and then you'd come back and kind of, you know, start that all over again. Um, as a result of the pandemic, sadly, one of the things that we have all seen is that everyone is kind of stuck at home. And uh, people are working from home, people are schooling from home, um, you know, people are having um, most, if not all of their meals uh, at home, even if you're, um, you know, ordering out, you're still sitting on the same table with the same people. Um, you know, people are people are stressed out. 
People are stressed out as a result of, you know, what their jobs hold for them. Part of the stress is we're probably to blame our, to our, we're probably to blame ourselves for part of those stresses. We've taken on responsibilities. We've taken on payments. Uh, we've taken on lifestyles um, that can only be maintained if we have a fat paycheck for a lot of us, uh, neighborhoods that we live in, cars that we drive. Uh, you know, the, the friends that we hang out with, the, the life, just the overall lifestyle that we've chosen, or a persona, right, a sort of a, a fake persona that we're putting on. And so people are stressed out, people are schooling from home, children are stressed out, you know, parents think, a lot of times parents think that, you know, I, there's nothing I need to worry, like, what do, what do the children have to worry about? I'm the one working, I'm the one paying the bills. But if you have teenage children, they're probably more stressed out than, than the adults. Uh, they're being schooled from home. They don't know what their future holds. They don't know when they'll be able to get back to school. They don't know what detriment this entire year of you know, not being in school in person may cause them in their lives. There's just so much going on. And as a result of that, there's people that are completely stressed out or maybe not, not completely stressed out, but there's just that element of kind of being stuck or feeling stuck. And as a result of that, what's happening is that people are snapping. People are snapping. Uh, people are getting angry at the very least, uh, angry at each other, uh, not wanting to uh, help each other, not wanting to communicate with each other, um, blaming uh, family members for little, little things that happen around the home um, screaming at times, um, put downs, emotional abuse. And we're also seeing that there happens to be, you know, um, that all, all, all of that in that trajectory, God forbid, can lead to um, physical abuse, domestic violence, all kinds of really, really bad things that uh, our deen, uh, the faith of Allah, the Quran, the sunnah of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam doesn't sanction, right? Doesn't allow any of this. And so, you know, when I was asked to say a few words and, uh, you know, we were trying to think of the title as to what the title would be, you know, um, I just wanted to be really, really basic. And we, we, we titled this and said, what our family needs from us? What does our family need from us? What does my, what do my children need from us? What do, what does my uh, wife need from me? What does my husband need from me? What does my parent need from me? Um, and in addition to that, what can I do to make life simple, easier for the people that I am living with, the people that I am in the house with? Uh, whoever and however they may be related to me. And, and we're, we're reminded of this um, tradition of the Prophet, uh, sorry, we're, we're reminded of this quality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he was compassionate. There's a lot of things that I could say, but really I just want people to think and focus on this one quality and one quality alone. Just being compassionate, just having compassion, right? Having compassion towards the other individual, no matter who that individual is, no matter what shortcomings that individual may have. Acknowledging, you know, we're, we're reminded, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam reminds us, man lam yashkurin nas lam yashkurillah, whosoever hasn't thanked people has not thanked Allah. If there's someone, and a lot of times we take these things for granted, right? We've, some of us have probably been in, in a marital relationship for a number of years. And a lot of the things that our spouses do for us, they've just kind of taken it on. It's just a responsibility. And we've just taken it as, uh, we've taken it for granted. And the reality is that some of the things or a lot of the things that our spouses may be doing for us are not even required um, specifically in Sharia speaking, right? People ask me all the time, what are the rights of the wife and what are the rights of the husband? And that's a very tricky question because there's so much in there, yet a lot of things that we do for each other as human beings are not individual rights. Um, and so being compassionate, being grateful, 
saying thank you to each other, right? Saying thank you. Someone has done something at home, uh, saying thank you. Um, looking around and, and seeing what can be done. Just because someone else at home is doing this all the time, that doesn't mean that they should be expected to do it all the time. There's times when you can go out of your way and make that thing happen. And if the other person does do that for one of them, then at the very least, acknowledging that they did it, just saying thank you, right? Forgiving people for their mistakes, forgiving people for their mistakes. People will make mistakes. People will do things wrong. Children will make noise. You know, um, as, as one of our elders would tell us, um, you know, what good is a house in which you have children but no noise, right? Or what good is a house without any noise inside it? Children are going to make noise. That's what children do. That's what they're supposed to do. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that we should tolerate children making noise all the time, but we can set some guidelines. We can do it in a way in which we uh, look out for each other. You know, the same message can be conveyed in so many different ways. We can, we can, be, we can get angry. We can scream. Um, we can nag. Uh, we can bring it up all the time. And we're all human beings. These are things that are going to happen. I'm not saying they're not, but what I mean to say is that knowing in that moment that there is a better way to do this and let me change the way I'm doing things, right? Let me change the way I'm doing things. The same message can be conveyed differently. There can be, there can be changes in our schedules. There can be changes in the way we do things at home so that there's compassion, right? There's compassion in all of this. Uh, so many a times, uh, you know, I get parents, uh, and I'm going to share a few stories here really quickly. So many a times I get parents that will call me, email me, you know, want to talk to me and complain about their children. Um, in some cases, rightfully so. Um, but if I ever and whenever I get the opportunity to speak uh, to that child, you come to realize really, really fast that that child's personality is what it is as a result of the way that child has been treated by the parent. And I don't mean to say that parents are bad people or parents have done wrong things, but it's about how you convey the message. It's about when you convey the message. It's the, it's the tone in which you convey the message in. It's the, uh, it's, the, it's the language or the parables or the stories that you use to convey that message with respect, with dignity, right? Um, the absolute worst one is when people are continuously nagging, whoever that may be, children, spouses with each other. Uh, at some point, no one wants to listen to you, right? At some point, no one wants to listen to you. And what we don't realize at times is that Sometimes you're slightly stuck in a relationship. Um, and in being in that relationship, you're just kind of like, you're, you're pretty much writing out uh, the relationship with your spouse or with your parents. Um, and I won't say children because children at some point make their way out of the house. Um, but you know, you're just uh, sticking it out. You're just getting through um, that relationship, not realizing that you're causing immense harm. Um, and, and why, why would you want to do that? The prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was extremely compassionate with those around him. Uh, were there times when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam became slightly upset with his spouses? Absolutely. But did that carry on for days and weeks on end? Absolutely not. Right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he, he taught us through his actions that people made mistakes. Forgive them and erase it. The Quran literally uses the term wasfah, right? Forgive them for their shortcomings. Erase it. In other words, it never happened. Right? It never happened. Not it doesn't help when we bring things up again and again and again. Right? We, need to, we need to be mindful of this, that, that our spouses become our best friends. Right? Our spouses become our best friends. There's, 
sometimes we just don't know what to do. Very recently, and, and this was something that, um, you know, I've, I've never experienced before, but a very, uh, you know, um, a stark reality, just something that just really woke me up. Uh, a youth from the community, um, you know, sent me an email. I don't know who this youth is, and I don't know who this, who the parents are, um, but, you know, sends an email and uh, it's not about who the person is, rather uh, the parable or, or what, I want to, what I want for us to learn from this story is that, you know, uh, mother and father have had their differences and, you know, the, the way they're being treated. And, and keep in mind that sometimes, you know, we have certain cultural ways in which we treat our spouses just because it's culturally the way it's been done in your family or in your ethnic background doesn't necessarily make it right. We need to, we need to learn to stand up for it. When, when your wife is being abused uh, by your sisters or by your mother uh, because of the language that they use or because of the freedoms that they strip away from your wife, it's the husband's responsibility to stand up. And I'm not saying that should be done rudely. You know, you need to be able to have a conversation nicely, respectfully with your sisters and your mother and say that this is not right. Sure, they may hurl all kinds of cultural abuses at you and so on and so forth. That doesn't take away uh, our responsibility to serve our family. Um, but at the same time, we need to be able to be that defender. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. We need to be able to learn to call it out with dignity. We need to learn to be able to call it out with respect. We need to be able to acknowledge the amazing things that the individuals around us are doing. And so in this specific case, you know, mother and father probably had their differences. This young child, teenager, I'd like, I, by the language and by from what I understood, probably a middle school child, um, says, very long email, by the way, and says that um, I have been making dua to Allah for Allah to fix my parents' relationship, and Allah is not fixing my parents' relationship, which means that my prayers are not being answered, which means does, you know, Allah doesn't like me, or that Allah does not, um, Allah doesn't exist, so what's the point in praying to God and what's the point in God um, at all. And all of a sudden I realized, and I, I responded to this, uh, in, uh, my immediate response to this individual was uh, acknowledging receipt of your email. It's a long email. I'll get back to you within, uh, within a few days. I immediately received a response that said that, um, you know, don't get me wrong. There's been a lot of good days between mom and dad. And, you know, we've had a lot of happy times and which, which I understand are, you know, as part of a relationship and this young individual acknowledges it. Uh, so it's not like it's all a bad uh, relationship. Um, but at the same time, you know, it just woke me up, it just sort of woke me up and said that because of mom and dad's arguments that make the children upset, uh, that make the children upset. Um, what ends up happening is that um, this one child is now losing all faith in God, right? The greatest loss of all losses in the world. One is to be turned off. One is to stop praying. One is to, but one to, to completely say that I'm going to stop believing as a result of God not listening to me and answering my prayers. And, and, you know, upon realization of how grave the situation was, I took some time out and, and responded with a very lengthy uh, response. And so we're reminded that compassion, that's the one word I want to touch upon, right? Just sheer compassion is what we need for everyone in the house, acknowledging that everyone has their uh, talents, uh, their strengths, uh, everyone has their weaknesses, their shortcomings, uh, and doing whatever it is that we can to assist them in those roles and responsibilities, assist them in their roles and responsibilities. If your family comes from the, you know, the South Asian uh, culture or the Middle Eastern culture, we have some very, very interesting things, right? So, it's like, you know, one of the spouses takes care of all of the housework, even if they happen to be a working 
a mother, a working spouse, and then the other spouse has certain other uh, responsibilities. And it's almost like, you know, people never take the initiative to help out the other spouse in so many different ways. There's simple things um, that can be done, you know, very simple things. Don't get me wrong, you know, uh, the garbage can at home is full. Um, pack it up, go throw it in the garbage can, right? There's dishes in the sink. You can, there's cer certain, some things that everyone can do. Some things, you know, some people just may not be able to do or, or learn is what I would say. But, you know, there's things that you can do to make the other person feel appreciated. And at the same time, there's things when, when someone, when, even if it's your spouse, your child, your parent has done something for you to be able to say thank you to that individual. And it's really weird. Honestly, it's really weird. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, you know, just the other day I did something for, you know, my dad and, and he comes out of his room and he says, Beta, shukriya, jazakallah khair, may Allah reward you. And I just felt, I'm going to be honest, it's kind of felt weird that, you know, my dad is not supposed to be thanking me for what is supposed to be an obligation, but it makes you feel good on the inside that I, I my, you know, my efforts, uh, my hard work, my efforts have been appreciated. It's so all it takes. This is what we learn from our elders. And that's why if, if, if we happen to be elders, if we happen to be, you know, people who are going to become, um, you know, mother-in-laws and father-in-laws in the upcoming years, and all of us will, do you really want to be that monster? Um, you know, do you really want to be that monster for your daughter-in-law or your son-in-law? Because it's not worth it. Uh, we make our lives miserable as a result of it. We make our children's lives uh, miserable as a result of it. We make our son or daughter-in-law's lives uh, miserable as a result of it. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. And as far as, you know, serving, one of the biggest sort of things um, within uh, immediate or family relationships are expectations. Right? Everyone has expectations from this other individual. We shouldn't have expectations. Learn to do things yourself, right? Help the other while they're doing things, whatever it may be. Appreciate the hard work that's being put in. Some, sometimes people will work hard to be able to make ends meet or whatever it may be, right? Appreciate that. Say thank you. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ reminds us, tahaddu tahabbu, exchange gifts, exchange love. Right? Exchange gifts. Gifts don't have to be expensive. Right? Gifts don't have to be reserved for certain times of the year when it's your anniversary or your birthday or, or whatever it is. Gifts don't have to be, as I said, expensive. It's just, honestly, it's just about common sense, right? But being compassionate, that individual, your father, your mother, your wife, your husband is a human being. And just like you, they have feelings, right? Just like you, they have feelings. Just like you, they also get tired. Just like you, they also want to rest. Just like you, when you are thanked, makes you feel good, they feel good. Just like you, when something angers you, something will anger them as well. And if you've been in a relationship long enough, you know each other's trigger points, right? Don't use those trigger points. Stay away from them. Allah will reward you, right? Be kind to others. Allah will reward you. You know, in this whole story, um, it's a long story of, of Aisha radiallahu anha when she was, uh, her, the story of her accusation, uh, in minkum in suratun nur. Um, the person that accused uh, Aisha radiallahu anha was a relative of theirs, right? People say, he's my relative. How could he do that to me? Well, it's been going on forever. It happened with the likes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Um, and who was this relative? This relative was a poor relative. And this relative also happened to be someone who Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu financially supported with a monthly stipend. In other words, you know, this person had no job. Despite that, Abu Bakr didn't go around saying, oh, you don't have a job, I'm spoiling you, I shouldn't give you a monthly stipend, you need to learn your own lesson. No, he just did what he, the goodness that he did was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course, Abu Bakr was angry, radiallahu anhu, as any human being would when his daughter was accused. 
And so Abu Bakr took an oath. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said that I'm not going to support him anymore. This is it. This is the end of it. You're done. I'm done with you. I got nothing to do with you. Allah didn't like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't like that. Allah revealed the verse in the Quran. وَلَا يَأْتَ لِأُولُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Right? It is not honorable. It is not good of those with honor, dignity, wealth amongst you to take an oath not to help those that happen to be in need. Then Allah says in the Quran to all of humanity, but specifically to Abu Bakr, we learn this lesson, right? This timeless, this extremely valuable lesson through the story of Abu Bakr. Allah says, وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَعْفُوا Forgive them. وَالْيَصْفَحُوا And erase it. Don't bring it up again. Don't bring it up again. Right? وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا Don't bring it up again. أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Would you not love that Allah would forgive you? Right? Would you not love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive you? That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another place reminds us that a, a true believer is one through whose tongues and hands others are saved. Not just hands, but tongue as well. Right? Through their tongue and hands that others are, are, are saved. Um, there's, um, you know, there's a few things that I want to go through before I close really quickly, but, you know, there's, there's all kinds of damage. If, if you if we don't have a healthy, and people, we need to change this. We need to work on this. If we don't have a healthy relationship at home with our spouses and with our children, there's all kinds of impacts that this will make. It'll make, you know, um, emotional impact, mental impact. Uh, spiritual impact. Uh, a lot of times, children specifically associate Islam to their parents, to the people that they interact with at the masjid. And if those individuals are abrasive, then they don't want any part of that life. And part of not wanting that 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 lifestyle of the abrasive individual are there is their faith as well right is their faith as well parents don't realize that our relationships with each other make an impact um on, on those around us especially our children and as far as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know talking about being kind there's two or three hadith i want to share really quickly the Prophet alayhi salatu was Aisha radiyallahu anha narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said alayka bil rifqi wa iyaka wal unfa wal fuhsha your duty is to be gentle and beware of harshness and bad words don't be harsh sometimes people just feel that the only way they can get across others is be by being harsh right just being angry all the time by being mean all the time screaming all the time you know uh, trying to be controlling all the time, get over it. Okay, we're living in very, very different times. Those children will turn 15, 16, they will leave. And if you happen to be in an abusive relationship with your spouse, right, your children, when they get older, will take their mother with them. And I'm not saying that's the only reason why we should be kind to our spouses, but that abuse is not going to last forever. And we will be responsible for it on the day of judgment. How were you with those around you? How were you with those that happened to be immediately around you? That's why there's another hadith the Prophet wasallam says, and I want to close in a minute or two. Anas ibn Malik. Anas is the young man that lived with the Prophet wasallam for 10 years. Right? He was the khadim of the Prophet wasallam for 10 years. And what does he say? Anas radiallahu anhu maqala li uf. He never said a word to me. He didn't say a word. Now, does this mean that Anas was, you know, um, he's a sahabi, of course, radiallahu anhu. But as a child, everyone was a child. Right? There's a narration once when um, Anas radiallahu, I haven't even mentioned the hadith. I'm just sharing a story about Anas. Anas radiallahu, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam sent Anas on a task. 
and Anas Radi, who was a young child, he, he, goes out, uh, he goes out to do the task and he sees other children pl playing in the street and he starts playing with them. The Prophet Ali is waiting and waiting and waiting and you know, uh, goes out and he says, you know, where is Anas? And so he goes out looking for Anas radiallahu anhu. And he goes out looking for Anas and he finds Anas radiallahu anhu and Anas radiallahu anhu is playing. And uh, when he's playing, uh, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam just uh, calls him in one narration that just taps him and says, Oh Anas. And Anas, oh, oh Ya Rasulullah, and he completely forgot. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't scold him, didn't curse at him, didn't do any put downs, no emotional blackmail, you know, none of that. Oh, you you will never become, this is what parents do, they see parents. You will never become anything, uh, you know, when I used to be your age, this, there's a time and place. You want to share when I was your age, share a good story, share a fun story, share it at a good time, share it when you're all sitting together when I was your age. There's two ways to tell the exact same story. When I was your age or when I was your age, there's two ways to share the exact same story. Right? The Prophet ﷺ taught us through this, through our actions. What does Anas say? لم يكن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سبابا ولا فحاشا ولا لعانا كان يقول لأحدنا عند المعتبة ما له ترب جبينة the Prophet ﷺ would not abuse others. No physical abuse, no emotional abuse, no mental abuse, no verbal abuse. He would not use obscene words as, as we do sometimes, you know. And I, I won't share them, but you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about obscenity in and of it, just, just even just bad words, calling people names. The Quran doesn't allow this. It's a major, calling people names is a major sin in Islam, even if it's your own children. He would not use obscene words. He would not curse others. If he wanted to admonish any one of us, whenever he wanted to admonish us, he would say, what is wrong with him? Malahu, tariba jabinatuhu. What is wrong with him? His forehead be dusted. It was just a way of saying that you know, may he clear his mind. May he do things right. Right? May he do things right. Brothers and sisters, the last thing I will share before I close is that uh, have a sense of humor. Smile. The glass is always half full. Rather than worry about the things that you don't have, be grateful about the things that you do have. Right? Life is never going to be perfect. Life is not perfect. Life will never be perfect. A lot of the things that we so desire, we're never going to get. It's, it's as simple as that. And I don't mean to say we shouldn't be making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We won't get in this life. We're going to get it in the hereafter. Because whatever we get in this life would be temporary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give it to us in the eternal afterlife. Right? A lot of things we're just never going to get. Right? That's, the, that's the way, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. This life was never meant to be perfect. Our tests in life, in this life, are far easier, for at least for the people that are probably going to be watching, watching or going to be watching this live stream at some point. Our tests in life are so much easier uh, compared to the tests of others. Most of our problems are first world problems, right? Life is temporary, right? Be nice to each other. Be kind to each other. Have a sense of humor. Right. If 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 you have a humorous individual at home, entertain them, you know, humor them. It's OK. Some people are just like that by their nature. Trust me. I have people that complain and say, well, uh, you know, they're joking all the time. Trust me, having having someone at home that jokes all the time is far better than someone having uh, someone having someone at home who's just harsh all the time. Right? Who's just harsh all the time. So have a sense of humor. Smile. Be grateful. The glass is half full. Allah will look after us. Allah will relieve us of our difficulties. The same Allah that brought us here today to this day will take us till the end of our lives. Allah will look after us. Right? وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا There is not a creature on the face of this earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responsible for its sustenance. We were helpless and Allah made sure we were looked after, right? Allah will continue to look after us. 
may Allah bless us all and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be kind and compassionate and empathetic and sympathetic at times towards um, the individuals around us. May Allah bless us all. Jazakumullah khair. For those of you that are still with us, uh, may, may God bless you. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward you. Just as I said in the beginning, I want to take a moment to thank you. Thank all of you on behalf of NISA, North American Islamic Shelter for the Abused, uh, for your support over the years, our, uh, on behalf of the staff, uh, the board, the clients, uh, at NISA, we all would like to thank you for your uh, continued support over the years. Uh, for those of you that may or may not know, we run a, 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 a shelter for victims of domestic violence in the Bay Area. We have also recently, uh, for the last year now, been running a, a transition home uh, for uh, those victims once they uh, leave the shelter. So your uh, contributions go a very, very long way to assist us in this cause. Uh, please continue to support us. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.